Hello everyone and thanks for joining. A quick look at that AM transmitter that I promised. As I mentioned earlier, my uh, paper design. We'll take a closer look at the schematics here in just a moment. Turned that into a uh, breadboard. Did some tweaking. And then lastly, just a uh, prototype here on a wooden board using a uh, single 9 volt supply. Let's uh, listen to the uh, transmitter here in action. Let's take a look at the uh, schematic here. To keep things simple, I elected to leverage a Hartley oscillator design and take advantage of the variable capacitor that I already had on hand as well as uh, creating a simple inductor here for L1 and L2, which I'll expand on in just a moment. As you can see, I'm leveraging uh, Q1 a 2N3904, just a simple, easy to find transistor. And you'll find that to be the case as well as we move along to the RF amp as well as the audio amplifier itself. Now if you take a closer look here at L1 and L2 on the schematic, what I'm trying to indicate is that the coil itself around the T50-43 toroid that I used is wound anti-phase or in opposite directions. So that's important for this particular design to allow the oscillator to actually function. Now let's take a look at the photos itself here that better depict the uh, winding direction itself for reference as well as the inductance here of the uh, coil in total for L1 and L2 as measured on my LCR meter uh, just for reference. The stray capacitance itself in the design allows the inductor value to be less than what you would typically calculate at 230 to 240 microhenries. Taking a quick look here at the remaining part of the circuit, it's fairly straightforward. You'll see C4 is just a coupling capacitor that allows me to attach the oscillator back over to the RF amp. And you will notice C5 as well. There was a little bit of ringing that occurred on the sine wave. So placing the uh, capacitor there back to ground eliminates that issue. R5 is important. That allows me to better shape the sine wave itself and also adjust the amplitude of the oscillator in a fashion not to overdrive the final RF amplifier as well to keep the power well under any uh, requirements here. In our case in the States, the uh, FCC rules not to exceed 100 milliwatts. I'll expand more here in just a moment when we get to the audio section, but you'll see the broken line as well where you have your audio input and that connects back to the base itself of Q1. So take note of that and we'll expand on it in just a moment. Let's move along now to the common emitter buffer RF amplifier that I elected to use. As you can see, the design here of the RF amplifier closely mirrors that of the oscillator circuit with the exception of L1, a simple one millihenry choke. Otherwise, the design itself follows your typical common emitter design. As I did in the oscillator section, C5 was also added here to couple some of the RF energy back to ground and reduce some of the ringing that occurs on the sine wave. Now let's take a look at the audio amplifier as well. To keep things consistent, again I'm using a common emitter audio amplifier here. And the choice, as I noted earlier, another 2N3904 transistor. Various resistor values could be used for R1 or R2. The importance of R2 is to take and bias the uh, transistor Q1 here. 
So to get the proper bias, you can see I took my voltage DC at the collector itself back to ground and making sure that what I'm seeing there is about one half of the supply voltage. So around four and a half volts or a little less at the collector itself by varying R2 in this case. And you can see for my design somewhere around 750K uh, got me to that sweet spot. Now a couple other things to note. You can see I've got R3 and R4 added. Those would be optional. In my case I ended up being a fixed resistor in one case and variable in the other just to make sure I had some wiggle room for my audio input or audio output itself. And as I noted earlier, you'll see the output of this particular part of the circuit feeds back over to the base of Q1 or the 2N3904 used in the oscillator section itself. Okay, let's take a closer look now at my prototype build. A couple things not called out on the schematic. If you'll look to the right side of my audio input, you'll see the on-off switch, the electrolytic capacitor, another capacitor and an LED and a dropping resistor. That was added after the fact itself. Uh, you can see here I've got my uh, connection points for my variable capacitor or condenser tied to the uh, screw down terminals making for a quick uh, connect disconnect which makes it really a cool and effective for getting the board out and for my standoffs just some number two um, screws and nuts just to keep things extremely simple a little velcro on the back side of the battery as well in addition to some rubber feet here on the bottom side of the uh, mounting board so here's a look at the final output itself the sine wave as I tune across the uh, broadcast band this is not under load, so you can see the peak-to-peak uh, -peak voltage itself. Again, as I noted, not under load, and this particular uh, transmitter is uh, well under the uh, 100 milliwatt regulation for the states. So with that said, a disclaimer, if you build this yourself, uh, please do so. Make sure that you are in compliance with your uh, rules and regulations for your particular location. Folks, thanks again for uh, watching. Hope you found it helpful. Take care.